Yo, what's up guys, my name is Mr. Freeze 2244 and welcome to Carte Blanche. This is the Elusive Target Arcade Contract with Hitman 1 Elusive Targets. So, I'm going to be showing all three levels with the default loadout, although I don't recommend using the default loadout. I recommend using equipment for all three of these levels, it makes make it a lot more easier. But for those of you who don't have any equipment, I want to show you the default loadout for all three levels. Level 1, again default loadout, going to start in this default location. And uh, we have two objectives for this elusive target. We need to take out Howard Moxon, the broker, and we need to retrieve the Ivory White, which is the, the filigree egg. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. This is going to take a while, but uh, unfortunately, that's just the way it is when you're using default loadout. You are going to have to uh, sacrifice some of the things that you can't do to cut corners, cut, cut corners, I should say. So the first thing we need to do is head down into the basement, grab that uh, fire extinguisher. We're going to grab this stylish disguise. We're going to knock him out just to get him out of the way. So when he slightly goes past, I'll recommend just uh, throwing it at his head. That'll knock him out. I'm going to put it back. And then I'm going to drag his body and put him in the nearby crate. And then I'm going to take his disguise. Once we've done that, we are going to pass through the locker room. And on the right, it's going to be our barrel. And on that barrel, it's going to be our crowbar. Go ahead and grab that. Just behind you on the opposite wall, there's going to be a fire extinguisher. Pick that up and throw it at the security guard's head. Pick up his weapon and retrieve the uh, fire extinguisher and throw it at the tech crew. That will knock him out as well. So Once we've done that, we are going to hide both of these bodies. We're doing this purely to get the tech crew disguised and the security guard will spot us. And that's why we took out the stylus as well, because again, he would get in the way. So... We are making sure that we grab the tech crew disguise after we've done these bodies. This is a bit weird because they're sitting in a sitting position, so it's quite difficult to actually grab them. There we go. Put the disguise on. Once we've done that, we're going to retrieve the fire extinguisher and just put it back on the wall. You don't have to, but... Yeah, there we go. Next thing we need to do is basically set up the kill for Howard Moxon. So we're going to take him out first. So we're going to come through this door right here, climb the stairs. So the target is going to be wandering around this area outside. It could be in any kind of random location out here, but it doesn't matter. We're going to grab this screwdriver that's just over here. And then we need to sabotage a plug socket that's on the floor. But before you do that, just do make sure that you turn off the electricity first. Turn that off. Very important. If you sabotage the plug before you turn it off, you are going to get electrocuted. So only expose the wire after you've turned it off. Now it's exposed, we can get ready to turn it back on. But we're only going to turn it back on when the target walks over that puddle. Why, why are we waiting for that? It's because there's a photographer that walks around with his assistant or model what do you want to call it and they walk through that puddle so we can't just leave it on and then just leave it and come back because you might take out a non-target so unfortunately we do have to wait a while for the target to walk across this puddle it could take a couple of minutes it could take five minutes it could take ten minutes it could take a long time but either way he will eventually walk across that puddle and that is when you want to turn the electricity on that will electrocute him for electric electrocution accident kill and that'll take care of that. So I'm going to skip to that point to save you waiting. Fortunately for me, I only had to wait about a minute and I could electrocute the target and that'll take care of one of the objectives. Now one of the objectives is complete. You're now locked into the contract and you will no longer be able to restart the mission. But if you do need to restart the mission for any need, then go ahead and close the application of uh, on your system, whether it'll be on PC or Alt F4. Or if you're on console, just close the application. And once you restart the application, you can replay the elusive target. The only way you can't do that is when you die. That is the only way you can't replay the elusive target. What we did there was we put our suit back on. We climbed back up the stairs, jumped over this railing. All we need to do now is watch out for this enforcer that's just on the left. Just be careful of him. We need to retrieve the uh, the ivory white egg now. And that's going to be in Dahlia Mogolis' office. But there's going to be quite a few people around the area. So another perk of this contract, well it's not a perk, but another downside to this uh, arcade contract that is the complication of additional enforcers to disguises. 
So that's going to be a quite tricky one, especially if we're coming to level 3. Don't think I pointed it out at the start, but yeah. It's not really that important when it comes to uh, level 1 anyway, so... All we need to do is climb this pipe, and then vault over this wall. We're now on the same floor where we need to be. Now we're going to enter the attic area. Take a right as you come through the door, climb the railing, and then we're going to climb all around the other edge, and then climb into the bathroom. There's going to be two guards in that room. So what we're going to do is turn this clock radio on, and then turn it back off. That's going to distract one of the guards in the room. So when he comes in, we are going to take our uh, crowbar that we have on us, and then we're going to knock him out. Just make sure you are crouched and the door is closed before you do that, because you don't want to get spotted. Next, we're going to drag his body and put him in the nearby closet. Leave the gun there. What we're going to do now is overflow the sink. Once it starts overflowing, we're going to turn it back off. That's going to distract the other guard that's in the room. He's going to see the weapon on the floor and he's going to take it away. Now at this point, you need to keep an eye on where my goal is. If she's heading towards the office, I recommend, you know, just waiting. But if she's far away from the office, I recommend just going for it. Break open this uh, safe and then grab the egg from the safe. Well done. Now from this point, what I did is I put on this bodyguard disguise. And what I should have done is just run straight out through the front. But for some reason, I don't know why, I climbed this railing and went back. Kind of was in like a two-track mine there. But you didn't need to do that. You could just run straight back, back, back out into the auction area. Hey Darling, my goal is to enforce to this disguise. That's the only one you need to worry about, really. So we're going to leave here, vault over this wall and climb down the pipe. We're taking the helicopter exit. And there's two enforcers down here. One is going to be circling around the helicopter. One is going to be standing in front of the helicopter. So we're just going to avoid their lines of sight. And we're going to take the helicopter exit as a easy exit. So here's our enforcer that's walking around. We're just going to get around, circle him, get around behind him. So there we go, that's a Silent Assassin for level 1. And that was the, uh, overall that's the easy part. I think level 2, especially level 3, is a lot more tricky than level 1. Despite the two objectives. But level 2 also has two objectives as well. So I think this Elusive Target RK contract is probably the most difficult one out of any of them that's popped up so far in 2022. But that was level 1, that's Silent Assassin. Let's move on to level 2. Level 2, we have the Entertainer. He takes place in the bonus mission of Marrakesh. And we're going to go for the default loadout again. But once again, you need to be wary that Disguises do have extra enforcers. And that's doubly true when you're actually around the target. So if you are planning to wear a waiter disguise around Philip Giggles, then I do not recommend it because they're basically all enforcers up there. So we're going to do it a different way. So from the very start, we're going to pass through this middle area just to get through a little bit quicker. And then we're going to come over to like a locker over here, like a garage. And we're going to grab the rat poison that's in the room. Once you've done that, we're going to go over to this uh, bottle of water this woman is drinking. She has a shop key on her and inside that building is some lethal poison. We're going to need that. So I'm going to poison this bottle of water because there's nowhere to knock her out around here and hide her body without anyone seeing it. So we're going to poison that and we'll come back to it a little bit later on. Next step is to get into the cafe area. We're going to wait for this uh, waiter to turn around to drink his bottle of water. Then we're going to vault over the wall, grab the cafe pass on the left. And there we go, that's, that's one part done. Now, I've gone over here to grab the truck key, but I don't ultimately actually use it in the end, so you don't have to grab that key if you don't want to. But that was just to unlock one of the exits, which I'm not going to take, so it's just a force of habit. Next, we're going to show the pass to get into the cafe itself. We need to retrieve the uh, the guest list, and we need to grab this Wade's disguise as well to do it, because this is the woman with the guest list. She drinks from that champagne glass, and that's our opportunity to isolate her and get the guest list off her. So we're going to head into the bathroom, grab the rat poison and the wrench. 
And then we need to be a little bit patient here. So she'll go off and have a phone call conversation. We're ultimately just waiting for that guard there in the corner just to come over to where we are so we can set a distraction for him and then take his disguise so we can poison that glass of champagne. Again, keep in mind, once you have that disguise on, there's going to be added enforcers, especially around this area. Yes, the bar lady is an extra enforcer for that disguise. And uh, the main mission, what's his name? Kong, I can't remember his name now, but he is going to be an enforcer as well to that disguise. So turn on the radio once the uh, waiter is coming close to where you are, then turn it off. And then we're going to hide in the closet, no not closet, the crate. Next we're going to equip the uh, the wrench. As soon as he has his back to us, we're going to exit and then knock him out. Grab his body and put him in the crate. Kong Tuo Kwang, I think his name is. He's a main target for the main mission. He is going to be an enforcer, so, but he's going to be in his little room in a moment, so you don't have to worry about him too much. But you need to worry about that waiter. So once she turns around that barmaid, we're going to go ahead and poison this glass of champagne with a rat poison. Once we've done that, we're going to head back to that suit and put our suit back on. Because this disguise is dreadful for this particular mission because of all the added enforcers. Next step is to go and get the shop key. So we, you remember we poisoned the woman a little bit earlier with the emetic poison. She's now in this bathroom, so make sure the door is be closed behind you. Knock her out and then put her in the nearby crate. Grab the key that she drops on the floor. And what we're going to do now is go and grab that lethal poison. And it's just basically where she was drinking the water bottle from. The shop that's right next to it. There's going to be two people inside, but they don't ever turn around, so you don't have to worry about those two. Lethal Poison is literally just going to be on a little table behind the door. Once we've got that, this is going to be our key to take out our target. We're not going to take him out at the moment. We're actually going to go back to go and get the guest list first. So we need to get regain access to the cafe. So we need to show the pass to the guard at the door once again. She should be at the bar around about this time. But if not, just wait a little bit. There she goes. She's going to head to the bar now. So she's going to drink that drink that we poisoned a little bit earlier. And ultimately, if you had sedative poison, you could poison that with sedative poison. She'd get knocked out on the floor. You'd be able to grab the guest list straight from there. But because we're going for a default loadout method, we can't actually do that at this point. So we're poisoning her with an emetic poison. She's going to head off to the bathroom now and... Get a little bit sick. Say what? Hey, man. Really? So when you go into the bathroom, I know it's tempting, but make sure you do not drown her. She is not a target. We just need to knock her out. So we're just going to close the door behind us, then knock her out, and then put her body in the nearby crate. goodness all these bathrooms have crates in them the grab the guest list and that's one of the objectives completed now you're locked into the contract we will no longer be able to restart the contract unless you close the application of the game now we're going to head towards our target so what we're going to do to do that is uh, we are going to circle around this area around the back there's going to be a pipe climb that all the way to the top and we're going to slowly but surely make our way around this building There's only one way to go, so just keep following the path that it takes you, and it will eventually get you towards the target. There's going to be four people in the area, if I remember correctly. Two guards, the target, a waiter, and a random NPC who is not an enforcer. We're going to climb down here, making sure everyone's back to us. Back to us is there before we climb down, otherwise we we'll, go, we'll get spotted and we don't want that. So what's going to happen now? The waiters come downstairs. Then the target is going to come downstairs. And he's going to come down and talk to another person. There's a whole bunch of dialogue. What happens? And the NPC will drink from a glass of coffee that's on the laying on the table. He'll go off and be sick. And then our target's going to go off and applaud him. And that'll give us an opportunity to actually poison the glass of coffee ourselves. 
We can't do it at the moment because you will get spotted 100%. So there's, there's nothing you can do at this point apart from just wait until this conversation is played out. I'm going to skip to the point of when that actually finishes. So after the guys walked away, you'll be in this position right here. And I'll give you an opportunity to actually subdue that waiter. And what we're going to do at the moment, this moment is go ahead and vault the wall. Poison the glass on the left with the lethal poison pill jar. And that will take care of itself. We're going to hide this body just a little bit better. Just as close as the wall as we can. We don't want to get out spotted. There we go. All we've got to do now is just head to an exit. And we are going to take the... Uh, is it called the Bazaar exit? I don't remember now. But it's the exit next to the pipe anyway. So the target is going to head over towards his glass of coffee. And he's going to take a drink from it. There he goes. And because it's going to be a poison kill. His body will be found. But uh, you don't need to worry about it. Because, you know... As we know, poison kills do not negate your silent assassin rating. There we go. So we're taking this exit. We got silent assassin for level two of the carte blanche. Level 3 we have the, the bad one, the, the twin, elusive target, which is level 3. Again, additional enforcer for this one, even with your suit. Default loadout, same thing, we're not going to change anything. But a little bit of a rant for this one, I really, really did not like this. The, the only way you... I'll show you what I'm going to do, but the only way to do it is just cheese it. And it's just stupid. This elusive target overall has next to no opportunities at all, at all without like any like overpowered equipment like the dark guns and stuff like that and but in hitman 1 we didn't even have that so you had presented really with one main opportunity which is which is poisoning and you can't even do that this time because it's the opportunity isn't there because both targets are now in forces which doesn't make sense because the brother is actually the client again it doesn't make sense the bodyguards have both have bodyguard ai so you can't distract them with coins you can't distract them with weapons it's just silly i don't like it but end of rant anyway what we needed to do is go over there, grab the coins from that hat. Uh, but you didn't really need to do that, really. You could just take the coins over here. But we're actually going to distract this woman that's in here. She wanders around the area. We just don't want her to interfere with what we're about to do. So we're just going to wait for her to come in after we distracted her with a coin. Knock her out. Drag her body down the stairs. Leave her there. You don't have to take that woman out because she walks away anyway. We're going to grab the coins that are on the table here as well. We don't... I don't even think we use all of them anyway, but... Throw your coin in here into this bathroom to wake this guy up and get him to move away from the area. We didn't even need to do this really either, to be honest. We're going to subdue him. Hard his body in the crate. This is all just precaution. Next, what we need to do now is basically create a breadcrumb trail. I know that sounds really stupid, but what we're going to have to do is just drop coins every couple of paces all the way up to the round about this area. And you need to get lucky with this as well, unfortunately. This guy, you don't have to really pay much attention to. The coin's quite far away from him, so you don't have to do anything with him. You need to just leave him alone. That woman there, she turns around as well. The target is right there in the distance. She, he's going to be hanging around the performer right now. So we need to, like I said, create a breadcrumb trail just like this. And you need to get a little bit lucky, really, because we don't know which target is going to see these coins first. So, you need to be sure that the correct one is picking these coins up, because if he's not, you're going to have to restart the contract and try again. And uh, again, the problem with them both being super enforcers, uh, you can't get close enough, really, to see which one has the rest. Watch, you need to just basically use the camera and get lucky. Again, it's just really stupid. The final couple of coins we're going to drop in this bathroom here. So we're going to drop one right in the middle of the room. And the final coin we're going to put just as close to the the neck of the the toilet as we can just right there because we are going to drown the target if you're not intending to drown the target you can go ahead and shoot him if you'd like and put him in the crate but we need to make sure he sees all the coins again this is quite tricky 
So you need to zoom in with the camera and see which one's got the got the watch. He's on. He should be on his right, uh, his left wrist, I should say. So mine is going to be on the right for me, on my perspective. Now initially it looks about bad news. Uh, they've got both of them off seen coins, but luckily our target is the one that's following the breadcrumb trail. One of his guards is going to follow him because each one has one bodyguard. The brother, which is our client, is going to be walking away. Make sure you have the correct elusive target, because if you don't have the correct uh, brother and you harm the one that isn't, it's going to be a mission fail. So make sure you are eliminating the correct one. And because he's an enforcer as well, we have to make sure that we don't get spotted. So once he gets close, we're going to open the door to make sure that he sees the coin in the bathroom. If he doesn't see the coin in the bathroom, uh, you basically must have to just restart because we've already messed it up. So, well, there we go. Once we notice that he's seen the coin in the middle of the bathroom, we can hide in the crate. And then he'll come into the bathroom, see the coin by the toilet. Once he walks past us, we can exit the crate and then drown him. He can leave his body there after this. This is an accident kill. His body will be found, but don't worry. Like I said, it's an accident kill, so you don't need to worry so much about it because uh, they don't harm your silent assassin score. Now you, all you need to do is just be careful of, of his brother who's an enforcer so just keep an eye on that. And then we're going to take this boat exit over here but overall I just really did not like, not like, like doing this. I don't see another way of doing this without any equipment. Without equipment how else are you supposed to do this without doing a breadcrumb trail? His guards don't react to coins. They don't pick them up. They don't pick up weapons. There's no opportunity to knock them out anywhere secluded. So what else are you supposed to do? I don't think the developers would have thought this through very well. And this was far from being enjoyable doing level 3. But that's just my thoughts on it anyway. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. What you thought of the levels 2 and 3 uh, of doing a default loadout. I honestly didn't like it. I know we're not restricted for doing a default loadout. But for new players, how else are they supposed to do this? It's just not very, uh, very ideal. But luckily you have me around to help you through all these these tough periods but yeah thank you very much for watching drop a like if it did help you out subscribe if you are new to the channel and hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams consider supporting me on patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below or clicking the link in the description and a big shout out to all my psycho assassin members i really do appreciate all the support that includes andrew phillips bedry wandering wendy b constantine Mueller, mark davis and paul at home becoming top tier psycho assassin members if you want your name read out in the credits be sure to become a psycho assassin member yourself again link in the description for all the details i'll see you guys in the next video cheers